everybody, Steve here. Wanted to give an update on the uh, the coolest bubbler on YouTube, which is back there. I also got my uh, new housing for the Smack Booster cell. In other words, a clear acrylic so you can see the bubbles instead of just a you know white PVC thing with no bubbles. So anyway, <coughs> I wanted to talk about the, uh, the bubbler in particular because there's a, a bunch of people. <laughs> and thanks for the messages, y'all. I appreciate it. And the ideas and... Uh, uh, who comes to mind, uh, Dan, um, Steve from the Install Guys, talking about how the uh, connectors need to be like either a nylon or polypropylene or a, a canar, canar type of plastic uh, so as not to corrode and uh, found out some good information. So thanks, appreciate that. Uh, that's, that's another thing that comes along with testing and throwing this stuff out on YouTube is to be able to find out stuff that I didn't know so I can incorporate and improve whatever it is I'm working on, whether it's a cell or, you know, the bubbler or, you know, I don't know, whatever, how to make Cheerio sandwiches or something. Uh, so anyway, yeah, there's got to be some long-term testing on this thing first. I mean, it does work. One thing I've already found in testing is that not all check valves are the same. Uh, there are some that are of lower quality than, than others. And again, with the check valve, um, what we're looking at is when we have that dual chamber system, uh, we have a check valve right there. Bing. And what we want to do is for the gas to go up through the check valve and it'll go through another uh, chamber of water and then it'll go back, the air will, or the gases will go out through the top and it'll go into our engine. So one of the key things that we need to remember is that this check valve operates the way it should, and so it should not allow any water back down into that bottom chamber. And I've already found, um, as I've been doing some testing, I haven't been doing videos because it's really boring stuff, but there is a company called uh, arcplas.com. It's A-R-K-P-L-A-S.com. And I picked up a couple of their high speed, supposedly high speed, uh, um, check valves and these check valves they after a while they allow water to leak back down uh, into that first chamber and so um, and I haven't there's also uh, let's see there's a couple other links I think it was usplastics.com and of course McCarr, uh, McMaster com also has check valves but again, I think we need to be careful when looking at what check valve we use because obviously, I mean, like this thing's a piece of junk. Um, it uh, installed, a, did a test with this check valve to see if water would come down from a top section down to a lower section. And yeah, within uh, 24 hours, um, it allowed pretty much almost all of the water that was in the top section to go back down into the bottom chamber. And so, you know, you spend some money and you you know, maybe this would work just in the gas line, so I'm going to go ahead and keep it. I'm not going to throw it away. Uh, there's also some other things that I would like to do because um, I still obviously have more testing to do. And, and I pretty much uh, when I planned this thing out, I came out with a, threw out a lot of different ideas and brainstormed and kind of narrowed them down and came up with this system. So it worked out pretty good, but there's still some improvements that need to be made. Uh, one, for example, is the acrylic tubing is really... Um, it, just straight up, it's really expensive. Uh, you can call me a cheap Charlie or whatever, but uh, to spend for one foot of that two-inch clear acrylic tubing was like uh, it was like fifteen to twenty bucks, and so I think that's a little bit expensive. <clears throat> you know, I want to be able to make a, a bubbler system that works, and so people like me who uh, want to try to save some money, be able to have a good quality bubbler and don't have to spend like 20, 30 bucks here and another 10 bucks here and another, you know, whatever to make up a bubbler. So I'm currently looking at, um, I might even go back to using PVC. And then um, if I use, like for example, here's an exploded view, but if this is, a, if pretend this is a, the bubbler, obviously it's an exploded view and your check valve, uh, your check valve is right here. Um, Basically, what I want to do, uh, if we use PVC, it's a lot less expensive than, than purchasing uh, clear acrylic tubing, uh, which I haven't found any really decent prices. 
but if we took um, basically we took the PVC and we cut a window out of the PVC and then I could take some of that clear acrylic and then cut it and just create like a window to a plate a clear acrylic plate to go over that that uh, rectangular uh, window and then glue that to this housing uh, that that would allow uh, again you could still see the water level so you could do your maintenance you could still see cool bubbles um, again like that that bubbler system is probably just for setting uh, uh, setting on your on your bench test or taking a science fair project or whatever it's, that's the first first version so and uh, it's still going off pretty good but anyway maybe something like this where you're able to cut out a, a section of the PVC and then put a, a piece of clear acrylic over that to create a window maybe that would make things a little bit less expensive and a little bit easier on uh, people that are trying to try to save a few bucks so um, like I mentioned, the uh, the connectors. I want to say thanks to Dan and Steve from the install guys um, about using uh, either nylon or polypropylene fittings or nylon or K K Y N A R fittings uh, for the the top and the bottom uh, because apparently yeah you use brass fittings and that's going to have some type of reaction uh, with the caustic solution uh, and again I want to try to make this. And I'm sure as everybody else, we want to make it as user friendly as possible. We don't want to have to keep checking on our cell like every two hours or things like that. We want to we want to make it simple, user friendly, uh, you know, kind of out of sight, out of mind, and where the maintenance is really minimal and easy. So people like my wife can have the uh, the booster inside the van, and she doesn't really have to worry about anything. Um, it's kind of cool for us. Um, you know, because we get to tinker and play and try to get more power and all that neat stuff, you know. Hard, hard, hard. Uh, but for some people, they really don't want to do all that tinkering. They just want to use it and have it work, and that will be it. So that's some other considerations. And again, uh, like with the bubbler, uh, getting a bunch of messages, and I'm reminding people, yeah, this is the coolest, the coolest looking bubbler on YouTube. It's, again, I want to... I just want to state again that it's probably not the most efficient, but it does fix some problems. And again, probably the most efficient bubbler that I've seen is back, actually a reservoir system to where you fill your cell and it goes through um, and it goes back into the reservoir and so it kind of circulates your electrolyte through your cell. Um, I think it was Excel for God that did a video that kind of explained a little bit on uh, condensation and. Uh, EBN IC, uh, INC also has their system, uh, their dry cell systems work off that reservoir system uh, or setup, and that's really efficient. It doesn't look cool, um, but uh, hey, it's probably the most efficient thing out there. So anyway, I just want to clarify that just because it looks the coolest, it doesn't mean it's the most efficient. And while this bubbler does answer uh, a bunch of questions and help some some things out as far as space saving and things like that and, and again cleaning up uh, the gases um, <clears throat> if you have two bubblers one next to each other it's probably still going to do the same thing uh, it's going to go through the first bubbler it's probably going to clean out those ugly sticky bubbles and it'll go through the second bubbler and it'll do just like what it does here um, and give you some clean gas uh, so I'm not saying that the other bubblers are, are bad or worse or whatever. This is just an improvement that I've seen and uh, that I made and, and it works, but there's still a lot of stuff to be done. Um, and actually, if you think of it in the long scheme of things, uh, the bubbler system is secondary. What's really important is taking the cell, getting it installed in the vehicle, getting the vehicle computer to, to accept that hydroxy gas or Brown's gas, and able to get your vehicle to get an increase in miles per gallon. That's that's probably primary. Uh, this the stuff of the bubbler and stuff like that. That's secondary. Um, but again, I just wanted to throw out some stuff there, and uh, still working on it, just like everybody else. You know, still trying to to get their their stuff going and get some increase in gas mileage. So, but anyway, yeah, I'm still working on it. And again, if you guys want to use this or try this. Uh, there's no guarantees, as with anything else. This is all at your own risk. But, uh, yeah, feel free. Um, 
some people, somebody asked me if I was going to put a patent on this stuff, on this thing, and really I just don't have the money to go through the patent process. Um, it's open to everybody. Um, it's PVC parts and stuff like that, and uh, uh, it's free information. Uh, it's open source, whatever you want to call it. Uh, if somebody's got some ideas or knows how to make this open source, you know, officially, it doesn't require a lot of money. Let me know because I don't want I don't want this to be something where somebody takes it and uses it, let alone me, to try to get a bunch of money and hold back something that's a good working idea. So, but anyway, hey, thanks for all the comments and everybody, and I look forward to uh, you all doing some more videos. And that's the update. So I'll catch you later. Peace.